Hello everyone, welcome back to economics class. This session, we will discuss chapter 4. It's about law of demand and factors affecting demand. However, since we just have 20 minutes, we will try to uh, touch only the most important ones, okay? So, in the first place, I want to discuss the meaning of demand with you. In general, when we say demand, it will it will have a variety of meaning. But in economics, when we say demand, you have to remember four important factors. You please look at the part. Quantity, willingness to buy, price, and time. So these are the four factors which you should always use in order to give the meaning of demand. And therefore, what is demand or define demand? It simply means the quantity of a commodity a consumer is willing to buy at a particular price during a given period of time. That will be called demand. Clear or not? Once again, the quantity of a commodity a consumer is willing to buy at a particular price during a given period of time is called demand. Understood? That's the simplest meaning of demand. Now, I want us to explain the factors affecting or factors determining individual demand for a commodity. You know, there are many buyers out there in the market whose demand is affected by so many factors. All right. But for making things simple, we are emphasizing only on a particular consumer, an individual consumer. Understood? An individual consumer. And what are the factors which affects his demand for goods? So these are the factors written on the board. We will explain one after the other. So the first factor is on price of the commodity as a rational consumer. As a rational being, our demand for goods will always be low when the prices are high or not. At the higher price, we don't want to demand or we don't want to buy more. But when the price of the commodity falls, our demand for the good increases or not. And it happens even uh, during online shopping also. I'm sure many of us does online shopping. You have the mobile with you, you download the app, and then you want to check as much as possible. As long as the price remains high, we don't want to buy. But when shopping festival comes in, when offers in many forms comes in, discounts, that is the moment we wait for, and then we increase our purchase for the good or not. So. Depending on the price of the commodity, the demand for the commodity of an individual is determined. So the higher, the higher the price of the commodity, the less will be the demand. The less the price of the commodity, the higher will be the demand. Clear or not? So that's the first factor affecting demand. Second one is called price of related goods. Before we go further, what are related goods? Related goods are those goods whose demand by consumer changes with the change in price of the related good. Suppose the given good is good X. This is a good. So with the change in price of this good X, there will be change in demand of the related good. It could be Y, it could be Z, so and so forth. Are you getting the point or not? Related goods are those goods whose demand by a consumer changes with the change in price of the given good. So the price of this good X is now changing. The price of the good X is changing and therefore it will lead to change in the demand for the related goods as well. The price of the related good will remain unchanged but because of the change in price of this good X, there will be a change in the demand for this. This is called related goods. They are in one way or the other way related. And to substantiate that statement, they have given us two examples, substitute goods and complementary goods. Now, what are substitute goods? In a football match also, when a player gets injured or when a player does not play well, the coaches are always there to replace one player by the other player. 
substitutes or not. That happens even in goods as well. There are some goods which can be replaced by another good. Some such like examples are, you know, tea and coffee or not, pepsodent and Colgate. There are many goods which are considered substitute goods. If you don't want to drink tea, you can always drink coffee. They can be substituted for one other or not. Likewise, if you don't want to use pepsodent, you can always use Colgate, toothbrush or not. Likewise, if you don't want to eat apple, okay, you go for mango or maybe banana, so and so forth. So these are the goods which can be replaced by the other good. Those are called substitute goods. Now, what happens when there is a change in the price of the given good? Let's say there is a change in the price of tea. Suddenly, the price of the tea has gone up. The price of coffee, the price of coffee does not change. But because the price of tea has risen, has increased, the demand for coffee will rise. Getting the point or not? The price of coffee does not change. The price of tea changes, it increases. Because of this change or because of this rise in the price of tea, people will stop drinking tea and they'll shift to coffee because the price of coffee is still unchanged. Substitute, you are now substituting this tea for coffee. Are you getting the point or not? So we, are, we have now substituted this tea for coffee. Substitute goods. Why it is written direct? <clears throat> Why it is written direct relationship? It means because of the rise in price of a given good, there is a rise in the price of the substitute goods. So when one side rises, the other side is also rising. That simply is called direct relationship or positive relationship. Are you all getting the point or not? Once again, substitute goods are those goods which can be replaced one for the other. It is called direct relationship because when the price of a given good rises, the demand for the substitute goods also rises. Both the sides are rising. That's why it is called a direct relationship. Clear or not? There are so many examples, but if we keep mentioning all those, we might not be able to finish this, so I'm winding up from there. Next, we have complementary goods. What are complementary goods? Those goods which are required jointly, or those goods which are used jointly, are called complementary goods. Ingben and Ingbot. Without Ingben, uh, Ingbot is also not useful. Without Ingbot, Ingben is also not useful. They are required jointly. They are used jointly. Without withdrawal, it becomes harder for the car to run or not. Without car, withdrawal is also not as useful as it is today. So withdrawal and cars are also complementary goods. Now, when there is a change in the price of a given good, there will be a change in the price of the complementary good. That's why it is called inverse relationship. Just one example. Because of a fall in the price of withdrawal, because of a fall in the price of withdrawal, there will be a rise in the demand for car or not. Are you all getting the point or not? Because of a change or because of a fall in the price of withdrawal, there is a rise in the price of, sorry, in the demand for car or not. That's why when one side falls, the other side increases. It is called inverse or negative relationship. Because of a fall in the price of withdrawal, there is an increase in the demand for car. Getting the point or not? Because why is this happening? Because these two goods are complementary goods. They are required jointly. They are used together at a time. And therefore, when price of one uh, such good changes, the demand for the other good will also automatically change. But this change is inverse. So when price of petrol rises, the demand for car will also fall opposite. Getting the point or not? So those goods which are required or used jointly are called complementary goods and there is an inverse relationship in the complementary goods. The best example is, let's say prices of petrol falls, it will, it will tempt the people to buy more car. That therefore, 
the demand for car will increase. Withdrawal is very cheap and therefore, you know, to run a car, it becomes, uh, it becomes cheaper for the customers also. And therefore, even though price of the car does not change, because of a change in the price of petrol, the demand for car will increase. That happens in complementary goods, clear or not? And these two substitute goods and complementary goods will also come under related goods. And therefore, before we move on to the next point, let us try to recall the meaning of related goods. Related goods are those goods whose demand by consumer changes because of a change in the price of the other good. Simple as that. Now we have income of the consumer. You know, as a rational being, as a rational consumer, our demand for goods and services increases when our income increases or not. So initially when you are poor, you want to have so many things, but because of your less income, you are not able to, uh, to consume all those goods. But later on, when your income increases, when you become rich, your demand for goods and services also rises. And it's happening here as well. So in order to substantiate that statement, we can take the help of these two examples, normal goods and inferior goods. Now, before we explain further, you should remember that one particular good, let's say this marker, it might be a normal good for me because I'm a teacher and I need this on the port. But for others, this marker is not a normal good for them. They don't need this or not. So uh, the same good can be a normal good for one person and the same good can be an inferior good for other person. Are you getting the point or not? For me, as a teacher, I need wristwatch and therefore this is a normal good for me. But the one who works in a workshop, he does not need, you know, this watch and therefore this watch is an inferior good for him. Getting the point or not? So the good will be same, but you know, it all depends on the consumers whether the good is a normal good or inferior good for the customers or for the persons, clear or not. So normal goods, to define it for one mark, are those goods whose demand by consumer increases as his income increases. Are you all getting that point or not? In the first place, uh, let's say, everyday milk. You know, in all the households, we drink tea in the morning, in the afternoon, sometimes before we go to sleep also. This is a very important product for us or not. So suppose you are buying every day, just you are buying two packets of every day in a month. But because your income has increased, because your income is increasing, your demand for every day is now rising. So this every day is a normal good for you. Getting the point or not? So normal, actually, normal goods are those goods whose demand by consumer will increase as his income increases. It is, it's not only every day, it can be uh, the kind of rice that we normally eat, the kind of dal that we normally eat uh, in our kitchen or not. Maybe the bread, the biscuits that you always eat in the morning. So when your demand for all those increases because of increase in your income, consider those goods as normal goods. Clear or not? Likewise, inferior goods are those goods whose demand by consumer decreases as his income increases. That's very interesting or not? Your income is now increasing and therefore your demand for that particular good is decreasing. Those goods are called inferior goods. Are you all getting the point or not? Okay, now you are drinking every day, every morning, but because your income is rising, you are not demanding every day anymore. You are demanding some other good quality milk. And therefore, this every day is an inferior good for you. Getting the point or not? The same good can be an inferior good to someone, and the same good can be a normal good to somebody else. Or not? So you are drinking teas, every morning, but because your income is increasing, 
Now you are not demanding this good anymore. Those are called inferior goods. I'm repeating, inferior goods are those goods whose demand by consumer decreases as his income increases. Then we have taste and preference of the consumer. Okay, so it all depends on your taste and your preference for a particular good, no matter how much the price rises in the market. No matter how much the price uh, rises uh, uh, in the market, when you have a test and preference for the particular good, you will buy or not. You are a sports person, you like Nike products. And therefore, we know that the prices of all these Nike products are sky high. It's very high. But since you have habituated in wearing this sportswear, even when the price is very high, you keep on buying taste and preference of the consumer. Likewise, no matter how much the price falls down, all right, you are not a sports star, you don't like sportswear, now the prices of all these sportswear, Adidas, Nike, Puma, so on and so forth, everything is falling down. All right, 70%, 80% discount you are getting, but you don't have a, a preference, you don't have a taste for all these sportswear, and therefore your demand for all those goods are zero or nil. So, Depending on the taste and preference of the consumer, demand will also be affected. Getting the point or not? Lastly, we have miscellaneous factor. Miscellaneous factor, it comes in so many forms. I'll, I'll just cite one example. Change in weather. You know, monsoon is taking place now. Rain comes down anytime. You have so many plants to go out and buy. You want to buy chicken, you want to buy pork, you want to buy beef, you want to buy all these edible items, you want to buy clothes as well. List is very long, but because of the rain, you just stay back at home and therefore your demand is affected or not. Are you getting the point or not? So uh, because of change in weather, the demand for the consumer is also affected. Under miscellaneous, you want to also mention the name of, I mean, the examples of, you know, uh, uh, expected changes of price in the future. All right, the prices of every day is not changing. The price of petrol, car, tea, coffee is not changing. But you are having a feeling that in the next two or three weeks, the prices are going to rise. And therefore, you will go out and start buying more. So that will come under miscellaneous. And all these things are happening because you are having a feeling that there is going to be a rise in price in the future. Not only that, uh, you know, you are demanding just two packets of every day in a month, but because the number of members in your family is rising. Earlier, you were just with your, uh, with your wife and one baby, but because you know, there is an increase in the number of members in your family. Now it has become five, it has become six. So everybody wants to drink tea and therefore your demand for every day is now increasing even though price of every day does not change. Your demand for tea, coffee is also rising even though price does not change. Simply because of the fact that your number of uh, members in the family is increasing. And lastly, you know, distribution of income. If the distribution of income is even, if the distribution of income is such that all the people in the country are benefited, the poor are also benefited, then the demand for essential commodities in the market will rise. Likewise, if the distribution of income and wealth is uneven, rich people are getting the benefit, poor people are not. In such situation, the demand for luxurious commodities will rise. The demand for essential commodities will fall. Getting the point or not. So all this comes under miscellaneous uh, factors. Then we have market demand and its factors, which we will explain only in the next session. With this, I wind up my session for now. Thank you.